All right, so hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the main differences between an air cooler and a water cooler because I think a lot of people who are gonna be building their systems are gonna be taking a lot of this stuff into account. And I know water coolers do look a lot nicer. They've got the RGB, they look fairly clean and they don't take up nearly as much space as your traditional $100 air cooler like the Noctua NHD15. But today I really wanna talk about the pros and cons of buying each one. Because a lot of times there's not always a clear cut decision on what one is the better one out of the two. So yeah, today we're gonna be addressing the pros and cons of each. We're gonna be talking about pricing and also about relative performance between, you know, just buying a general air cooler versus buying a general water cooler. So first off, let's talk about the economics of these coolers. So air coolers have the widest range in terms of price floor to ceiling. You can find coolers like this, the AMD Wraith Stealth for $5 off of eBay, or you could be spending upwards of $150 on a high-end Noctua air cooler. And yes, there's not a whole lot different between this and a Noctua air cooler other than a much higher quality fan, much higher quality heat pipes, and just overall much higher quality fin stacks. It's gonna perform a lot better than this. I know this one doesn't technically have any heat pipes in it. It's just gonna be a standard aluminum base, but you kind of see the point, whereas there's a lot of ways to make a really low end cooler with an air cooler, and there's a lot of ways to make a very high end cooler and help it perform extremely well. Whereas with AIO coolers, there's a fairly high price floor floor for them. You're most likely not going to find a good quality one for less than $100. And that's just because it's a lot more money to get these things working and there's a lot more validation that has to go into it to make it a safe product for people to put in their systems. But the pros of using a water cooler versus an air cooler is that for the most part water coolers are going to perform a lot quieter than your traditional air cooler. While with an air cooler you're going to be using mainly the power of your fans to blow over the fin stack and the heat pipes to expel all of the heat out the back of the case. With a water cooler, you're going to be relying on the ability for the pump to move the water around, which again isn't an extremely loud process, and just for some fans to blow over some cool air onto the radiator, which again, there's a lot of surface area in here compared to your standard air cooler. So it's going to be a lot easier for this to expel heat from the system, and therefore it's going to run quieter. But that's not necessarily always the case that a liquid cooler is going to run quieter than your standard air cooler. Because like I mentioned before, you can buy fairly high-end air coolers. Something like the Noctua NHD15, like I mentioned before, can compete with these 240 millimeter radiators. And because of that, I honestly think that a lot of people should be at least considering getting a fairly high-end air cooler if they're willing to spend close to $200 on any sort of liquid cooler. Now, the biggest thing that I really think people need to consider, and it's one of the main factors that I consider as someone who's in the IT field, is points of failures and the reliability of the product. Making sure that your systems are up for as long as possible and you have little to no issues with the hardware that you're buying is something that is fairly important. And I believe it kind of goes for gamers as well. Like you don't want your system crashing or shutting down or there being any sort of problem with your hardware after you buy it. And as you guys may know, there's a huge disparity in terms of points of failure and reliability when it comes to comparing an air cooler versus a water cooler. With an air cooler, your pretty much only point of failure is going to be A, I guess if there's any physical damage to the air cooler, whereas maybe a heat pipe got busted open and your thermal exchange isn't gonna be as good as it once was, or a fan dies. And those are fairly easy problems to diagnose. If there is physical damage to the cooler, you just are gonna have to buy a new one. If your fan ends up breaking or the ball bearings go bad in it, then you're just gonna have to buy a new fan. Whereas with a water cooler, there are a lot more things that can go wrong with it. And when those things go wrong, it's not just gonna break your cooler, it can break your entire system. So for one, if you get a leak in one of these coolers, this particular cooler had a leak in the base plate. And I was lucky enough to catch it before any serious damage happened to the system. It was just relegated to a portion of the CPU. And for people who don't really know their way around computer hardware, that might be extremely hard to diagnose. And if they caught it too late, it could have leaked to underneath the CPU, caused a short, either killing his motherboard, killing the CPU. And that's one of the most worst case scenarios. If you have a leak somewhere up here where the hose connects to the radiator, you could have a leak over your graphics card, over the the other parts of the motherboard over your power supply and end up shorting one of those things and bricking it for forever. And 
leaks aren't even close to the ends of the points of failures for these systems. You can have a pump die, which is terrible because you're basically gonna need to buy an entirely new one of these. Whereas if you have a fan that dies on a air cooler, you just gotta buy a new fan. Also, if the loop was not sealed correctly or they didn't put enough of the antiseptics in the AIO, it can cause a buildup of gunk. And that is going to dramatically affect your performance of the system. And it pretty much means that you got to throw out the AIO and buy a new one. And again, you have a fan die on here and that's one of the better points of failure because if a fan dies, again, you can just buy a new one. You're not gonna really have to worry about your whole cooling system. I mean, if you just think about all the areas where leaks can occur to where something like the pump or just something else internally goes wrong with the cooler can lead to either you having to buy a entirely new all-in-one liquid cooler or you having to buy an entirely new system because some liquid got onto other parts of the computer. So this is one of the main reasons why I stick to air coolers. Because even if you buy a dingy air cooler, there's really no point of failure that's gonna affect your entire system. Whereas if you buy a dingy water cooler like this game DS one, there's a huge chance that your entire system gets destroyed and it could be hundreds of dollars that you end up having to replace within the system. This water cooler failed and I had to end up replacing it with this Corsair IQ H100 Elite Capellix. If you guys wanna see the full video on that, it's going to be out here probably in a week or two. Um, but that was, you know, that was one of the biggest things is that this ended up leaking, had some crazy high temperatures, and I ended up having to reinstall a new AIO. And again, that really does suck because if it weren't someone like me who just had to contact the company to get them a new one sent in, if it was you building your own PC and you bought one of these and it was just defective, you are either gonna have to wait for an RMA or just buy a completely new AIO cooler. But I'm not saying that there isn't any reason to buy an AIO, mainly form factor. Form factor is one of, if not the best reasons to buy one of these coolers. It is extremely thin and not even close to as bulky as what your Noctua NHD15 is going to be like. So there are reasons to buy one of this. You wanna conserve space, if you wanna keep the entire system fairly quiet, then I think an AIO liquid cooler is okay to go for, but you have to be very cautious about which ones you're picking from. Companies like Corsair actually do a very good job at making sure their liquid coolers do their jobs, they do the validation testing for them, and they make sure that overall there's not gonna be these sorts of problems like leaking issues and stuff like that that's gonna be caused from their side. Again, they can't really stop what people do to their systems, and that might cause a leak there. And they're gonna make sure that things like a leak from the base plate is not gonna happen. So overall, I think that if your particular situation warrants you using a liquid cooler or if you're a fairly experienced builder and fairly experienced with the hardware and you want an AIO then I'd say go for it but if you're kind of new to the whole PC scene and you don't necessarily know how to diagnose problems or you really don't understand what sorts of points of failure you may have with one of these and you're looking at buying you know one of those $100 liquid coolers like what this one is then I probably would steer you away from it. If you're gonna be buying a liquid cooler, you should be buying the upper tier ones. Those ones are gonna make sure that they're gonna last for a long time and they're gonna be tested extremely rigorously. If you're someone who's only looking to spend in the $80 range for a cooler and you still want something that performs fairly well and you're not really restricted by form factor, then by all means, go for a very high-end air cooler because for $80, you're gonna be able to get something that's really nice, like the Scythe Fuma 2, or one of those air coolers that is gonna perform probably fairly close to most 240 millimeter AIOs, but it's gonna cost a lot less. You're not gonna have to deal with all those different points of failures. And again, if a fan does fail, you're just gonna have to replace the fan. So yeah, if you're fairly new to PCs, I would probably just say stick to air cooling. It's the safer bet, and in the long term, it's a lot more reliable. But if you're restricted by form factor, or you've just been in the PC space for a long time, you know how to detect one of these issues if they end up coming up and you're fine with accepting the risk of buying an AIO, then I'd say go for it. But either way, this video is just here to kind of give you guys my opinions on what one you should buy and mainly just to give you guys some information about the two. So you don't go kind of buying one of these without understanding the risks of either one of these and the difference of performance levels you can get from one or the other. So yeah, guys, if you did end up enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like on it. Um, if you guys wanna see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Peace out.